Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? And welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Today what we're going to cover is the concept of keyframing. So, first of all, what is keyframing? Keyframing is a fancy word for custom animations to your content. So let's say you have an image and you want to add some dynamic traits to the image. Let's say you want to create some movement to the image. You want to move it from left to right, scale it up to down or, or you know basically just add some movements to it so with that you have to play some keyframes and within the keyframes you have to adjust some parameters and basically whenever you play it back you're just gonna see the gradual movement from point A keyframe to point B it's really self-explanatory if you see it so let's look at an example here so this is a project I did for a uh, makeup company they specialize in photographs and basically a lot of uh, model shoots as you can tell so notice what I want you to notice is one thing the camera movements and basically the movements of these pictures all of the movements were done here in Final Cut Pro 10 which is amazing you know Final Cut Pro 10 offers innovation it offers great great innovative technology for you to use so we're gonna recreate that using a different image okay now before we get started, I just want to emphasize on one thing, and uh, that thing is basically keyframing in Final Cut Pro 10 is really different from other NLEs. So one big, well actually I could summarize keyframing in Final Cut Pro 10 in two words. First is fun, and the second it's innovative. Why do I say fun? Final Cut Pro 10 gives you the tools for you to manipulate the images. So you could give, uh, you basically could use the tools or you could use the parameters. So if you're going to do something that you maybe you want to show it fast or maybe you have to do it fast, you would use the tools. Or if you want to be more precise, you would use the parameters. So Final Cut Pro 10 gives you that choice, thus making it fun. At least that's what I, you know, think. <laughs> and the second word was innovative. Why is it innovative? In Final Cut Pro 10, there is one option that I really like, and it's actually set by default, and that is of camera, smooth camera movements within keyframes, the ease in, ease out feature. So as you could tell, the images here were basically really smooth. It was really fluid, the movements, because Final Cut Pro 10 incorporates that and gives it to you by default, while other NLEs just basically snap onto each keyframe. So you would see the choppiness and the cheesiness, so, you know, it's really different. And you have to see it to believe it. Okay, now that you saw this project, if you would like to see more of this project, just uh, click on the annotation right here and uh, go watch it. It's unlisted, so because I can't show it in public. Anyway, let's go back. And I already created one project, and it's called Image Manipulation. So this is a 1080 project, so if you'd like to follow along, go ahead. Now in this image, as you can tell, the scaling was at 275. Let's bring it down to 100 again. Okay, great. So this is the image. We're going to work with this image, and we're going to add some dynamic movement to it. So first things first, I really am not a fan of the black bars on the left and the right. I don't know if you noticed them. This one and this one, I really don't like that. A lot of people do, but I just don't. So if you are a fan of those black bars, then you could animate it any way you want. But since I am not, we're going to have to do something about that. Now, since this picture is of a really, really high pixel, uh, and you know the aspect ratio is really high, what we want to do is we want to scale it up. So what you have to do now is click on your image, go to the scale option here on the transform palette, or you can also use the tools that Final Cut Pro 10 gives you. And they're located right here. I don't know if you can notice. Click on it. Click on this one. And basically, you will adjust all of these parameters with that single tool. So if we click on one of these... Uh, one of these here, we basically just drag it and we'll scale it up gradually. Alright, great. Just until it fills the whole image. Okay, cool. Now that we scale it up, we have two options. We could go from the bottom to the top, or we could go from the top to the bottom. Now in this case, what I want to do is I want to go from top to bottom. So what you have to do now is add some keyframes. So let's go to the start of this image, which is right here. Now what you want to do is you want to press the following. 
control plus the letter V. That's going to give you these set of animation tool representations. So basically, you could see your keyframes on the spot. So let's go to the beginning of this keyframe, I mean, of this uh, picture. Now, what you want to do is place your playhead in the beginning, go back to the parameters tab, and go to the position tool. Now click on that keyframe. Notice how I clicked on it. And you might notice a keyframe right there. It's basically set. Now what you want to do is you want to go to the first keyframe and then just manipulate your settings here. For example, my x-axis. I'm not going to move that. I'm going to move my y. So just uh, click on it and hold it. So we're going to go just before the picture ends, which is there. Okay, great. We already set our keyframe there. So that's that. Now what we want to do is we want to go to another point in the image. So let's just go here. Now what you want to do is you want to go back to the tool transformation palette, set another keyframe by pressing this button, and basically you add another keyframe. Click on the keyframe, go back to the transformation palette, and just set the axis to a higher range. So let's go up all the way to her face. Okay, great. All right, basically, as you can tell, we're done. So let's say you have this excess material. All you could do is you could just get rid of it by going to the keyframe, and that's it. So let's wait until it renders out, which should be in, what, about, should be almost done. Basically, you're gonna see some camera movement that is super smooth, super nice, and uh, let's go home. Press the home button, and then press spacebar. Okay, now notice how it was really quick. Okay, I want you to notice two things. First, it was really quick, and second, even though it was quick, there was a lot of smooth, fluid movement. So let's say you want to have that, you know, show, or maybe you want that slower. What you can do is just get the image, expand it, and then just get the keyframe, and just move it to the right. So as you can tell, we're on four seconds. So from the bottom to the top, there's going to be a four second clearance. So let's trim this here at the end, or we could keep it there. Let's just keep it there. So let's wait until it renders out. But uh, meanwhile, what I want to talk about is how effective this is. So basically, let's say uh, you want to move an image, but based on these tools, you're going to have to add a keyframe on all of these transformation tools. So just letting you know if you want to do that. Okay, great, it rendered out. Now let's go home and play it back. Wow, look at that. Did you notice that? It was like as if a camera was there. And if you add some lights, if you add some, you know, glare to that image, it's going to look like video. Trust me. And, uh, you know, just... Uh, Overall, this is what keyframing is in Final Cut Pro 10. So I hope you learned something, and uh, leave me a comment down below, like this video, and check out my past two videos. One is an NLE battle that we're going to create, and the second one is just a VFX Monday tutorial on basically how to change a color um, to a different color in Final Cut Pro 10. It's a really cool tutorial, so I hope you check it out. And also, a little message I want to give out, we're almost at 100 subscribers. We, we, I think we have 99 at the moment, but uh, we're almost at 100. I just want to thank all of you who have subscribed, and basically that shows me that a lot of you have dedication. And also, I'm planning to give out a giveaway on uh, once, once we reach 200 subscribers. And that giveaway will be something that every editor needs, or, you know, if you're into graphics or whatever. Basically, if you have a computer, you'll like the uh, thing I give away. So once we reach 200, we'll give that out. So uh, just uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.